We're so glad that you decided to join us here on Carry Hope Ministries. Of course, I'm Pastor Mark, and this is my lovely wife, Crystal. Good evening, Crystal. Good evening. So glad you're here, <laughs> and uh, we're glad you're with us. We want you to make yourself at home tonight as we're going to talk about something. I think that it's, uh, I, I don't know, it's a, it's a healthy reminder of us, whatever we go through, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. If you have a Bible, or if you can grab a Bible, you can turn with us into Judges, and we're going to pick up in Judges 7. Judges, Judges, Judges chapter 7. <laughs> Do this, just some things to run past you. Of course, we're a product of Gold Hill Wesleyan Church in Gold Hill, North Carolina. If you don't have a church home, we'd love for you to join us on 830 Liberty Road. Also, if you can't be with us in person, you can certainly join us online. We're on, uh, Lord willing, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live, and then on Sunday night we have prayer time at 6 o'clock. Wednesday night, we have Midweek Matters. Don Johnson leads a terrific small group. That is on Zoom, actually, and you need to uh, get in touch with me if you'd like to be a part of that. And then on uh, Thursday, we're always here for Carry Hope Ministries at 7 o'clock again on Facebook Live. Our newest ministry is on YouTube. We have uploaded two videos. We're still learning about that, how to put all that together, but uh, uh, that's uh, look for expansion on YouTube coming up. The YouTube channel is Real Gold Hill. You just look for Real Gold Hill and Put it in there like that with capital letters, and it'll show you our videos, or you could probably uh, do moving forward for, as a keyword. There may be other ways to do it, but nevertheless, Real Gold Hill is our YouTube channel, and we hope to expand it in the future. Tonight, though, we're going to talk about God being the source of victory, and it's found in Judges 7. We're actually going to get all the way through verse 8, if everything works out, but we're going to take it in little bitty segments along the way. Let's talk about what we talked about last week because we're kind of uh, continuing uh, progressively through Judges. If you recall, last week we talked about a judge and her name was? Deborah. Deborah was the judge last week. We talked about how Israel got victory over the Canaanites. Uh, Barak was the general for Israel and he defeated uh, Jabin was the king. But Sisera was his commander and of course Sisera was killed by... Jael. Jael, a woman. And so uh, Deborah had told Barak that uh, since uh, he didn't just go and be obedient, that a woman would get victory for Israel, or get credit for Israel's victory. Yeah. And she did. Uh, so they were freed from the oppression of the Canaanites, and they knew 40 years of rest, but then did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And you're going to see this over and over as you go through Judges. The book of Judges, it seems like every chapter or every few chapters, really not every chapter, but every few chapters, every time there's a new judge on the scene, he always or she always comes because Israel did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Israel did evil in the eyes of the Lord. God raises up someone and gives them victory and they celebrate and there's freedom and then Israel does evil in the eyes of the Lord. It's really depressing, but it's... It makes for great reading. It's one of my favorite books, especially in the Old Testament. There's a lot of action in it. But it says, so for seven years, God gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Why? Because they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. There is a direct correlation there. Now let's talk just a little bit about the Midianites. These were a great, a raiding group, uh, along with the Amalekites that would go in. Uh, and uh, of course, we've got them settled in the promised land. This is after Joshua and and they're there, but they're being raided, and they have to kind of stay out. Anything they have that's valuable, crops and the like, they need to hide them because they get taken away by these Midianites, these raiding parties. And so God raises up somebody who's going to deliver Israel and will be the new judge. Now, when we say judge, what do we mean? Mm. Mm. He, he or she was somebody who they would bring their disputes to, um, they kind of spoke for God yeah, during that time. They did. They were the leaders. We think of judges today as ordering the court sort of people. Mm -hmm. But these were really leaders, uh, some of them militarily. Some of them did, as we talked about Deborah, they did perform court cases. And made, and, and all of these may have done it to some extent. We don't really mm -hmm. know. But, but they were named judges and they were leaders. Samson was one. We're going to talk about Gideon tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, well, there's others that we could think about. Uh, Deborah, again, was another one. Jephthah, there, there's a number of judges, but these were raised up to lead Israel, usually to revolt and to uh, obtain freedom uh, through God's uh, granting them victory. Now, uh, so we're, so we're going to pick up, and, and I've got some, I, want, I handed Crystal something that I wanted to hold up and, and show, and we're going to see if you can see it. We can, we can, okay, and we're not going to be able to see here on our monitor, but this, 
this is uh, a Gideon Bible. And, you know, if you were in elementary school years ago, we used to get Gideon Bibles. Did you get Gideon Bibles in your elementary school? We yeah. did too. And if you ever knew anything about the Gideon Bible, this is one of Carrie's. They always had a little emblem down here. And some of you may have wondered what that emblem is. You know, did you ever wonder what that emblem is? I wondered tonight, and I know. You wondered just, tonight. You just, you just done on you. Uh, they are the Gideons, and we are talking about the Judge Gideon. And so what, what is that right there? Do you know? I think that's a torch. It is a torch coming and out of uh, a two-handled... Pitcher. Uh, I know, yeah. A pitcher, because that's what... I was going to say a clay pitcher. Yeah, a clay something. pitcher, because that's what, of all the weapons, that's what Israel is going to use to achieve victory. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But if you ever wonder where the Gideon symbol comes from, this is it. And uh, let's talk just a little bit about this guy, Gideon, that God chooses to deliver them. He's from the tribe of Manasseh. He's from the smallest clan. An angel comes and visits him. He says, you know, if God really loved us, I can't believe he would, he would make us be in servitude, servitude to this group of people called the Midianites. And this angel who talks to him, uh, and I don't know if the angel looks like Roma Downey or not. <laughs> There's an old reference for you. But nevertheless, he's, he's you know, he wants, uh, he, he, the angel pretty much tells Gideon that God wants to use him to bring victory and freedom again to Israel. And so... He goes and does something drastic. He tears down an altar, or he tell, tears down a statue of Baal. Right. And um, his dad is kind of confronted about it. And the dad kind of tells the people in the area that, you know, if, if Baal is, a, is so powerful, then see if Baal does something against it. Mm -hmm. The reason I say all that is because the first reference we have tonight of Gideon also calls him Jerob Baal, and that means let Baal contend. So that's where that comes from, because I think it's kind of weird the way they they stick that into the writing. So anyway, yeah. but let's look at it together. Judges 1 through 3. Early in the morning, Jerob Baal, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Harad. The camp of Midian was north of them, and it's talking about the, the Midianites, okay? Let me back up again and read that just to make sure you understand. The camp of Midian was north of them, meaning Gideon. you got Gideon and Midian, so it's kind of hard to understand. In the valley near the hill of Moreh, the Lord said to Gideon, again, this is the good guy, this is the torchbearer, this is Gideon, Israel, you have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands or Israel would boast. So there's, you know, the one thing about you say about Gideon is he was able to get volunteers. They were ready to be delivered. They were ready to throw themselves into the battle. How many did they have? Well, it, it says, let me, wait, let me back up. Or Israel would boast against me, this is God again, my own strength has saved me. Now announce to the army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left while 10,000 remained. So how many total did Gideon have to fight this battle? 32,000. 32,000. <laughs> 32,000. And I, I love what happens. God just pretty much tells him, hey, if you're afraid and you want to go home, you can go home. And how would you have felt if you were Gideon at that moment? That was not a pre-programmed question. No, that was an off-the-cuff question. He hits me with these. I mean, I was thinking about it, too. All of a sudden, you see a third of your army leave. I think... Um, they just walk away. Yeah, it would be hard. Of course, now there have been it times... It would be hard because Gideon was not Moses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Moses' faith, I think, was greater than Gideon's at this point, especially, because Gideon puts a lot of... Fleeces, yeah, but not just fleeces, but a lot, of, of, a lot before the Lord to say, if you are going to do this, then do this. Show this to me Show so it. I know I can trust you. Yeah, so you have I'm, a little bit of that with, with Barak earlier, and then yeah, you have the same thing yeah. with Gideon here. It's kind so of I'm a thing. I'm sure it was, it was a lot of a faith thing. They didn't, they probably, they did uh, feel strong in numbers. I mean, it's kind of like being the Chicago Bulls and... Michael Jordan leaving your team, being Probably. traded. Michael Jordan's birthday this week. So. Oh, that's fine. Uh, no, I, I just, <laughs> but it, I mean, it's like here goes two thirds of my team. Yeah. And wow, God, really, you know, um, I'm learning to trust you 
in, in a way that I wasn't prepared to trust you. So, okay, he, leaves, he loses two-thirds. Now, the interesting thing about it is God does this so that they will have no choice but to give him credit for the victory. And you and I, and I'm saying you and I and you and I, <laughs> we like to, we believe there's strength in numbers. Oh, sure. We like to have everybody on our side that's stronger. Uh, you know, when you play Red Rover, you always call the weakling over because, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, we want to feel strong going into battle, confident going into battle. And so I think it causes us to wave waver in our prayer life because we believe that we can fix it. We trust our own strength. We trust the strength of our friends, our doctors, our co-workers, whatever the situation might be. And we don't always trust in the one who brings ultimate victory. So, all right. So he thinks, okay, I got 10,000. All right. I, I, you can kind of see him saying, okay, God, it's not the way I wanted it, but 10,000 and you, okay, all right, but God's not finished. And we look at the next section, which is God chooses whom he wishes. Not only is God going to deplete the army again, but he's going to do it in a strange way. Let's look at it together. Beginning with verse 4 of chapter 7. But the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out for you there. If I say, this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say, this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, separate those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps from those who kneel down to drink. So I, this is kind of confusing to me. It's always been kind of confusing. What time I say? 300 of them drank from cupped hands, lapping like dogs. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the others go home. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites home, but kept the 300 who took over the provisions and trumpets of the others. Now the camp of Midian lay below him in the valley. All right. So we've gone from 32,000 to 10,000, and Gideon's a little bit uneasy about that. Like you said, he's kind of a guy who lays out fleeces. He does that a couple times just to make sure God's with him. And maybe he's thinking, as I would tend to think, okay, well, three of them did it this way, <laughs> and 9,700 of them did it the other way, so I'll lose 300 more, but I can deal with the 9,700. But God says, nope, it's the 9,700 that's going to be gone. Only 300 are going to be left. The lapping like a dog thing. What, how have you seen that? I always see it the wrong way, I think. How, how do, I mean, do you see them like, all right, it says they're on their knees, but they lap like, I mean, are those the ones that kind of crouch down? And well, it like said that? cupped hands, yeah. so yeah. And did the other, you like that? <laughs> did the other ones get down like on their belly and, and do it like that? I mean, did they lay flat? And the I think cups? they stood their they face stood, in the water. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess the reason I'm saying it, okay, when I was in the first grade, I'll never forget this, They one teacher said that he picked the ones that would be on their knees mm -hmm. so that they could turn and look in case there was an enemy and would laugh. Have you heard that too? I've heard that, but I, I read something interesting just today and really... The person thought, really, God, I thought that maybe our thing, we were making too much of that. Okay. It was just all to show. Well, let's just I mean, move on. No, no, no. no. I've heard I'm that, kidding. too. I've heard that, too. Yeah. Saying that God was those 300, it was just to show God's power. That he just that, picked the 300. Don't yeah, put too much into it. Don't put too much into yeah, it. Yeah, the other thing I heard was that somebody I've said it would be the work. I've, I've heard that, and then I've heard, though, that he picked the ones that would be the least likely. The mm -hmm. 300 that were chosen were the, the poorest soldiers. So I don't know, but anyway, like I like what you said. Let's not make a big thing yeah. out of that. Let's just 300 people up against the entire Midianite army. And all of a sudden, Gideon goes, God, what are you doing? You know, I, and I mean, really, wouldn't you sort of, you know, I, I can't imagine. So, but going, I, I almost, uh, yeah, as weird as yeah, it sounds, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. As weird as it sounds, I think when he got to this point, I would think. Why not? I would think, <laughs> okay, he really has <laughs> got a plan and he's going to take care of me because either that or he's crazy. Well, that makes, I mean, it makes sense. You, you start thinking, okay. 
He met his fleece thing. We didn't go into that story. Well, yeah, but but, at but first we got the fleece thing. You are nervous. Thing. You but got then the, oh. you get down to this. Well, when he finally got... gets down to where he's not going to use anything but torches and torches and vases or, or you know pots, and you think, oh, why not? You know, I've, I've gone this far, so why not? Yeah, we'll fight him with trumpets and and swords and tor. I mean, uh, uh, torches, torches and pitchers. pitchers. Yeah, so why not? Uh, boy, that's faith. I need that kind of faith. Yeah. I, I really do. I, I mean, I, I like to think I have some faith, but God's got it under control, and he's going to give Israel the victory with 300 people, Gideon to lead. We're going to talk about that next week. But before we go, we want to summarize what we've thought about, and that is, you know, you're probably going through some things. We go through things all the time, and we don't give enough of the victory credit when it's given to us to God. We don't thank him for the victory. We also don't trust him in the battle mm -hmm. enough. We don't have the faith. I, I've got just a few phrases up here. God chooses who to deliver. There were times when he delivered Israel, and there were times when he didn't deliver Israel. There were times when the enemies got the victory. There are times as our nation that we haven't always gotten the victory. There are times when as individuals we don't always get the victory. And we think that it's because we were less powerful, but God holds the key. And sometimes it's just to teach us something. Sometimes it's so that when the victory comes, it will be more complete. There's a lot of times when we think we'll get a partial victory, and that will be what we really want, but it, it's not. And God knows what's best, so we need to trust Him in that. But that's easy to say and hard to always do. Mm -hmm. God chooses when to deliver. Like, uh, when to, okay, I want to make sure I didn't say when to deliver her. <laughs> and, and that's what I was saying. Sometimes there's a bigger victory coming. Yeah. And we think that this is what we want right now. You know, they, rather than waiting a year for the right job, we'll take this one. Or rather than waiting a year for uh, the, the new whatever, yeah. you know, I, we'll, we'll settle. And, and God is going to deliver Israel at this time. He's waited seven years. And Gideon's probably thinking, you know, how was it easy to get 32,000 volunteers? They'd had enough. Yeah. You know, so, but God knows when the timing is right. Also, he chooses how to deliver. That's what we're talking about tonight. It doesn't seem to make sense. There are times when we just are praying and we're just, wow, this just doesn't seem to be any way that I pictured it would happen. But he is still granting the victory uh, that he deems appropriate. And sometimes it causes us to wait. Sometimes we don't get what we want. But it doesn't mean that it's not what's best for us at that time. And lastly, God chooses who will do the delivering. He chose the guy who looks silly. <laughs> he chooses who will deliver. There, are t I've always been amazed uh, at people who come along and lead churches sometimes. Uh, and you, you see and you think, this has been a church that hasn't grown for a long period of time, and a pastor comes in, and, and they may not be a flamboyant preacher, uh, but they're just a committed person, and it's the right person at the right time God uses, and something amazing happens. Uh, there are times when, I mean, who would have ever dreamed that things like uh, uh, the, the wall and the Soviet Union falling when it oh, did? True. I mean, who would have thought that Gorbachev and... And Bush would have been the, the leaders at that time. You know, I mean, I just, we never saw that coming. But God knew the timing. He knew who to use. He uses whom he wants to. And he, you know, we need to trust him because he can bring victory in areas we never dream and use whatever he wants to. He's getting ready to use pitchers and trumpets and torches and 300 men to give Israel victory.